When it comes to trade talks, the NBA is unforgiving and unrelenting. Carlos, you've been traded to the Tigers. One of the best players of the last decade was traded in a four-team blockbuster just a couple weeks ago. And NBA fans already sound like Goldberg in his prime. You want to know who's next, eh? Oh, no! In the age of shorter contracts and 24-hour news cycles, a star trade or star extension just means it's time to find the next potentially disgruntled star to plug into the trade machine. Step right up, Bradley Beal. With James Harden off the board, Beal is the crown jewel of this trade season. And there are a few wannabe contenders who need to start the bidding war. Beal has said the right things about wanting to remain in Washington since signing an extension in 2019. But everyone says the right things when they ink a new deal. That extension included a 2022-2023 player option. So if he keeps up his current level of play, Beal's probably only a year and a half away from unrestricted free agency. And in the modern NBA, that means the clock is already ticking on a hopeless Wizards team. Who could forget this despondent look on Beal's face after scoring 53 points in one of many Wizards losses in 2020? Look at that expression from Bradley Beal, he's not happy at all. Who can blame Beal for the frustration? The guy averaged more than 30 points and 6 assists last season. Something only 7 other players have done over the last 30 years. And he didn't even make an all-star team or an all-NBA team for his efforts. And there isn't even a plaque, or a signpost, or a statue of him in that town. That's what happens when you play for a 25-win team that went 20-37 and 37 even when you were in the lineup. Even with Russell Westbrook added to a team that got zero minutes from John Wall last year, this season's been more of the same, as Beal's unbelievable offensive exploits have meant nothing for a predictably terrible Wizards team that can't stop anybody. Through a month of the season, Beal led the league in scoring at 34 plus points per game, while also averaging more than five rebounds and five assists on 61% true shooting for a Wizards team that owned one of the league's three worst records. To be fair, Beal has to shoulder some of the blame. He's a big part of the reason Washington's looking at a bottom four defense for the third straight year, as he seems to be getting slower, lazier, and less attentive on the defensive end. But I don't think that should be of much concern to prospective contenders looking to trade for him. You can make the argument Beal's defense was always overrated, even at its best years ago when the Wizards were a perennial East playoff team. But it hasn't always been this bad. His defense has slipped as his offensive burden has increased and as his team's relevance has decreased. If he lands on a team that can sustain itself offensively without Beal needing to empty the clip every night, and on a team playing meaningful basketball, preferably with some defensive problem solvers around him, Beal's defense should return to at least respectable levels. So which teams fit the bill? The Heat were decimated by injuries and COVID-related absences through the first month of the season, which is the primary reason for the team's uneven start. But don't kid yourselves, Pat Riley, more than anyone, understands the value of, and necessity for, stars. The Heat came close to the mountaintop in 2020, but they're not winning a championship as presently constructed. And the house that Riley built doesn't aim for second place. And I guarantee everybody here, next year we're going to win it again. Miami should be willing to put Tyler Hero on the table. The question is, does a package centered around Hero, Kendrick Nunn, Picks, and one of Kelly Olynyk or Goran Dragic for salary matching purposes move the needle for Washington? Because of the Stepien rule, which prevents teams from being on the hook to outright trade two future first rounders in a row, and rules preventing teams from trading picks more than seven drafts away, the only first rounders Miami can actually dangle right now are 2025 and 2027 picks. The Nuggets may not seem like the best fit for Beal, given that they already boast a top 10 offense and a bottom 10 defense. But there's something to be said about being unstoppable on one end of the court, which is what Denver would be with Beal joining Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray on the offensive end. Unlike the Heat, the Nuggets can actually trade a 2021 first rounder this year. But that's the last year they can trade a future first rounder in until 2027. 
Michael Porter and the disappointing Gary Harris would be enough from a salary matching perspective. But is a deal built around Porter 2021 and 2027 picks enough for Washington? And are the Nuggets prepared to deal Porter for what might be less than two years of Beal? They should be. Then there's the Sixers, who, as any unfiltered viewer knows by now, remain in desperate need of an offensive initiator who can also create his own shot. Beal might not be a true point guard, but he's a ball dominant guard who has become an above average playmaker and is one of the game's elite multi-level scorers. Pairing him with Embiid would be a two-way match made in heaven and would make the Sixers a more balanced contender than the star-studded Nets. Philly was reportedly willing to put Ben Simmons on the table for Harden. And while Beal's no beard, Simmons has also looked weirdly disengaged to start the season. Is it that far-fetched to imagine the Sixers blowing every other team's offer away by making one of their two franchise pillars available again? And if not, would a deal centered around Philly's youngsters, headlined by Tyrese Maxey, a bunch of salary filler, and multiple first-rounders be enough for the Wizards? There's also a dark horse to consider in this hypothetical race. The Warriors, who've looked like, at worst, a pesky playoff team again with Steph Curry and Draymond Green back in the lineup, might hold the trump card here. Remember, Golden State owns Minnesota's top three protected pick this year, which turns into an unprotected first rounder in 2022 if it's not conveyed in 2021. I like the sound of that. Statistically speaking, if you play the percentages, even the worst team in the league, a title the Timberwolves will be very much in the running for this season, is more likely to finish outside the top three picks than with a top three pick. And given the potential of the 2021 draft class, the Warriors are holding a golden ticket. I've got a golden ticket. Given where Curry, Green, and the injured Klay Thompson are in their careers, the Dubs are likely more interested in what they can turn Minnesota's pick into rather than which teenager they can actually select with the pick. The Wizards may not want to take on Andrew Wiggins' contract, but if that Wolves pick is on the table, among a number of other draft assets, it would be very tough for a team staring at another long rebuild in Washington to say no to that. Figuring out how Beal, Curry, and Thompson all fit together when Clay returns in 2021-2022 would be a first world bridge to cross when they get there. In the meantime, a team boasting Curry, Beal, and Green would be an immediate threat to the Lakers' chances of representing the Western Conference in the finals again this year. Whether it's the Warriors, Sixers, Nuggets, Heat, or a wildcard team that emerges out of thin air, contenders will be lining up for Beal. He may not be an all-star, somehow, but he can surely swing the season and the title race like one. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button.